Irene's magical. So look, really looking forward to our um, first cooking class with you. Um, we live just outside of London. Um, we are properly in lockdown. Um, everyone working from home. Um, there's no ricotta to be found. So <laughs> <laughs> I've just got super, managed to get supermarket ricotta and um, flour is, um, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, lucky to have some flour. So, <laughs> uh, and th that's it, that's it from me. Thank you, Nisha. Okay, I have next on the screen, uh, Natasha <laughs> and Valerie. <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we're uh, I'm Valerie. That's Natasha. We're from the Netherlands. Uh, we met Irene like a couple of years ago. Uh, we went on family vacation. Uh, it was really fun, and we had some cooking lessons with her as well back then, and we really enjoyed it. So when she invited us to have some online cooking lessons, it would be yeah, it would be great. So uh, we thought let's just do it, and we also had some. <laughs> finding ricotta uh, we also <laughs> managed to get supermarket ones and um also the flour was a little bit of an issue because also here we're um in isolation for the um coronavirus so like the rest like the rest of the world <laughs> so uh, yeah looking forward to it yeah. thank yeah. you so i have next on the screen uh Mieke, mm -hmm. and i would like to say something before you start Mieke. So I want to uh, actually, uh, I, will, I will say it out loud to you and to everyone else. Actually, if we are here today, it's thanks of an idea of Meke that is shortly gonna show up in the video. I thank you very much because uh, it's something that makes me very happy and I hope it does make you too. <laughs> so I'll let you talk. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so we met uh, Irene last summer. Uh, we stayed here uh, for a week, uh, something like that, uh, together with our son Andreas. We enjoyed it very much. It was very, um, very quiet over there. Uh, we had a nice cooking lesson. Um, the re region is fantastic. So uh, your hospitality was your hospitality was very was great. Uh, we are living in Belgium. Um, our son is, is studying in the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and we are also in top down for the moment. Uh, two students are uh, uh, studying here at home with us, and we are working here, except for the little one, Andrea, who is in Delft. So uh, we really look forward to the cooking uh, evening, and uh, I'm happy to see you all and to meet you. <laughs> Grazie, thank you. Thank you very much again. Uh, now I have Eleanor and Tony. Hi. Oh yeah. I'm Eleanor. This is obviously Tony. He will not be doing any cooking, so you know I'm the important one today. <laughs> we live in. <laughs> you know why I said that, don't you, Eileen? <laughs> not at all. Don't understand any of this. I don't understand any of this. I only came in for wine. <laughs> you live in England in a village will, even smaller than. Sorry, say that again. We will uh, taste it. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> we, we live in England in Suffolk in a village even smaller than uh, Persianate, um, and almost as beautiful as Persianate. Uh, we've been going back there now for two months for three years. So we've lived there for six months effectively, and we will be back again, I'm absolutely certain, in. Uh, in Vignolio. I still have a terrible Italian accent. <laughs> if it wasn't for this virus, we would actually be in Umbria now. So. <laughs> but never mind. We're all having good and fun this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you will it's make it. It's going to be nice, Irene. Is it going to be good? Well, <laughs> I hope. I hope. I'm, I'm doing. I'm I'll doing make it go away. <laughs> Just go away. Go away. Go away. Bye. <laughs> I'm sure we will be fine and I'm sure it will be good. Um, so next on the screen, I have Mark. Ooh, greetings oh, from Scotland. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> greetings from Scotland. How are you? <laughs> yeah, we're up north. We're, we're up in Aberdeen. Uh, I'm Mark. This is my wife, Sue. Uh, we first met Irene at uh, the Pergit Valdano. 
a beautiful little hilltop village that we love and adored. Um, and Irene was a great hostess, so it was brilliant. And we thought we'd just carry on with this. I work at Shell most of the time, but we also have a small business called Piggery Smokery. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we make things like uh, Anduja, which is the, one of the prime Italian uh, charcuteries. We've also got things like beautiful bacon here, <laughs> pancetta, oh. and stuff like that. We normally do it online, but we're trying to save our postie from getting COVID. Lockdown, so we're on lockdown too. We, we do do local pickup, but it, normally we do it online. I'm also sporting a COVID haircut, which is a <laughs> bit of a Mohican my kids. <laughs> and I've also, we didn't have any ricotta, so we made our own from a recipe that I got hold of. We didn't have the full complement of spinach, so we're using stinging nettles as well. Very good. We're Very looking good, forward. Guys. And we've got some wild garlic here. We've got various bits of other pieces we're going to throw in. So we don't want to stick to your recipe at all. Um, you're all very ready. Good, good, good. And well done with all your preparation. So you. last but not least at all, it's Susan. <laughs> I cannot see who's in the screen. Wait, I have to get closer. <laughs> ah, Tamar and Ian. Okay, it's your yeah, turn. Hi. Oh, lovely Tamar. <laughs> so, um, Sorry, I interrupt you one second. So I love the fact that you're having the aprons. I'm not having it because as you might have noticed, I have done a few changes uh, during the winter. Um, so I I'll be brief. I don't want to annoy you with this, but uh, my, my younger brother found another job and he decided it was time to, to abandon me. <laughs> so, oh, oh, yes. oh, <laughs> yeah, and and so um, I took the chance to change a few things and uh, in this also the name and the brand. So uh, I'm happy you have these, those aprons with you uh, because it, it's part of my growth, let's say professional growth. Um, but I'm not wearing it because I thought it was not matching the new situation. But thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> now I let, I, let, um, I let you guys introduce yourselves. I don't want to hold you too long. So Tamar, Susan, Ian, it's your turn. <laughs> well, thank you. We're from the Netherlands and really looking forward to the cooking class. Uh, we've been uh, visiting Irene several times. Um, she's been to our place a couple of months ago. Uh, I work at the regional health office and I'm terribly busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, I managed to get ready in time for this class. I'm happy about that. <laughs> can, we can then uh, start with the recipe. So um, just, just to make sure we have everything we need, I'm going to show you the ingredients once again. Um, you should see them on the screen. I've divided them in small groups because we have mainly three preparations. Um, so the first one will be to make crispelle, so the, actually the butter that we need. Uh, we, we start with that one because we need to have the, the butter rested for some time. So we make it in the beginning so that we can have it to rest and then uh, to, uh, we can keep doing the rest of the things and then we'll go back to that to make the crispelle once also the bechamel will be ready. So to start with, if you're all ready, I'm just going to, again, revise the ingredients. So for the crispelle, we have the flour, okay. Um, we have then the milk, okay. And then we should have two eggs and melted butter. Okay. So the flour should be 150 grams. The butter, if I'm not wrong, should be 50 melted, uh, and the milk should be 450. And this is uh, to prepare the butter for the crispelle. Uh, moving to the other ingredients for the bechamel, we simply need a little bit of flour, which we're gonna sieve, and this is 50 grams. Then we will need 500 milliliters of milk. So half a liter and another 50 grams of butter, okay? Of course, to this we'll add salt and nutmeg. And the nutmeg will also be useful for the filling of the ravioli, which is, of the crispelle, sorry, which is spinach that I've already 
cooked, uh, squeezed all the water off and chopped. So this is already chopped. Uh, ricotta. And then one egg. And of course, again, the nutmeg, pepper, and of course we will have salt then. To garnish our crispelle once we are ready for them, you should have your tomato sauce. And of course, last but not least, except for also, uh, mainly for me, parmesan. <laughs> so are you, are you ready to begin? Yes. yes. Everyone? Yes. yes. Okay, so you should have uh, a large bowl with you and a sieve. Yeah. What we're what we're doing now, what we're doing now here is we need to sieve the flour to start making our our crispelle. So please. Irene, does, does the butter yes. have to be melted? Uh, for the crispelle, yes, it would be better. Uh, please do. And if guys, if you have any question, if you need any clarification, if I'm going too fast. Please stop me at any time, okay? Yeah. Don't worry, we're here to enjoy. We don't have the time limit, as I told you. So we can take our time and we're not in a hurry, okay? How much melted butter? How much melted butter? Um, if I recall, it should be 50 grams. 50 grams, okay. Yes, yes. Can I just check the no amount of flour? It's 150 grams. 150, okay. <laughs> So, if, if we can begin, <laughs> the microwave is a great invention. <laughs> so, for those who are ready, then we will go slowly. You can start by seeding the flour in your bowl, okay? <laughs> So we're making the crispelli. Yes. Crispelle. 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 Just say that as often as you want, Irene. Sorry? Say that as often as you want. In the Italian <laughs> accent. No, it, it does it does sound a little different. <laughs> So it, it, I'm very happy to be doing this dish because it's a long time I didn't make it. So I'm very happy. So have you sieved your flour? Yep. Yes. So now you should gently make space in the middle and put your eggs. Uh, I mean, it was 150 grams flour, yeah? Yeah. Excuse me? Uh, the flour was 150 grams, huh? Uh, the flour, 150 grams, yes, correct. So, if you have the eggs now, the recipe says that we should add a little bit of the milk, but not all of it, just a little bit to help now to mix, to help us now to mix the eggs with the flour, okay? Just a little bit before we put the butter, okay? The recipe says about 60, 70 milliliters. Yeah. I'm just gonna guess, because my, my uh, graduated yes. thing is here. Um, how much milk in total you use for um, the- The total quantity is 450. Four and a half fifty. Okay. Four and fifty, yes. And now to begin, just a little bit, okay? So now what you have to do is to gently stir, breaking the eggs, of course, in the middle, and start to regroup and to mix in the flour. We have to try to avoid to have lumps, okay? Is everyone okay? okay. Yes. So little by little, you can you can start adding the sorry little by little. You can add the butter, and then keep adding the milk. Here 
still liquid, but it, okay. it has to. It doesn't have to be like liquid as water. It's a little, yeah. little thicker than that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it is it clear enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. like a, yeah. okay. Okay. So I'll put this aside, and In the when. when um, no, it doesn't. It's not necessary. I'll just put it somewhere here where it's safe, especially from my dog. <laughs> I'm taking a little pot to make our bechamel. So now we'll have to to be on the on the stove. I have a lovely so, thick bechamel now. Good, same. I wanted to show you how you could um, roughly judge if your bechamel is ready. Basically, if you take a spoon, you should be able to have the spoon layered behind like this. You can start mixing the spinach with ricotta, okay? And then we can add the egg, and then we will adjust with pepper, salt, and nutmeg again, okay? Okay, so let's put this also aside. We're putting everything aside, guys. <laughs> it's, um, I don't mean. So now we can go back to take our, our um, uh, butter, sorry. Uh, so, um, so now let's place the pan with a little bit of olive oil on the fire and let's wait for the, for the olive oil to heat up a little bit. And then we'll try, okay? Valgano olive oil, of course. Yes. Uh, well, you have, obviously. Of uh, course. Valdarno olive oil. <laughs> uh, since two days, I've started to collaborate with one of our favorite um, salaries. And... Uh, so, because it's a hard time for everyone now, we're helping them to uh, spread the word and say, and, and, and you know, promote their wine and the, the fact that you can have it shipped at home. And oh, wow. so okay. doing this, um, uh, and I will explain you shortly, um, they suggested to pair this wine with today's recipe. So this is, the, 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 um, sorry, the celery is called Poggio Molina. And this is, it's, it's a rosé wine. It's a special one, I will explain you in a sec. And it's called Buccinello. Um, so, Poggio Molina Buccinello, is... Buccinello, Buccinello. Buccinello, wow. well said, well said. So, it's, um, this place is special because, or, okay, already the, the people are very nice and I like the way they, they, they deal with, uh, with, with people and they're very familiar and they do everything. They have their own garden, so um, they make their own wine, which is very good. They have uh, uh, quite a good selection. 
and um, the people are wonderful. And the best thing is that it's one of the few wineries locally that can serve you a meal and pairing their wines with it. So the, the place, it's beautiful, it's stunning. The, the wines are good, so really, we, we found a, a really good place to, to take you guys. We, when we were there in Mac last year, that was the best day we had, going around Mac Vineyard, and the food we had, and the wine, and the, just the ambiance of where we ate. It was just, a, just a, 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 an experience that you're never going to, get anywhere else and it was just amazing every single thing i think apart from the bread was grown made whatever <laughs> on the farm yes and that's it, true it's just <laughs> stunning just stunning so you need you need to have your bechamel yes and your tomato sauce for uh, uh, as as last okay okay from the beginning we need we need our um, our filling, of course, so the spinach and ricotta one, okay? Okay. So, um, take a spoon and have more or less a spoon, a spoon of, of the mixture, okay? And you place it on the crespella, like this. And you take a generous spoon of uh, of the filling, you place it inside. <laughs> of course, it will be a little harder if your crispella it's it's very thick, but it's not a problem. So then we can place it. I forgot the olive oil. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so now that you have all your crispelle on your dish, yes. you have to finalize with the with the garnishing. So basically you 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 the bechamel is the first one. Now it's time for our tomato sauce. Same as before, you just pour it on. Of course. So this I will put fifteen minutes. All good? All good. Everything okay. is in the oven? Yes. Everyone is yeah. done with uh, with everything? Yes. It was nice meeting everybody. You might bump into you in Italy sometime. Which would be yeah. great. Thank you very much, Thanks, everyone. Everybody. Bye. Well, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Stay well. Bye.